Hello, everyone, and thank you to thank you for coming to an online event. My name is Carla Ning, and I am your event coordinator tonight. Today, we're going to be learning about resume writing in this online ISC workshop. A few quick notes before we get started. So firstly of all, I'd like to do the land acknowledgement and it's very important that we are doing the land acknowledgement to acknowledge our situation. So I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the traditional territories of the Blackfoot and the people of Treaty 7 region in Southern Alberta, which includes the Siksika, the Pekani, the Kainai, the Sutina, and the Stony Nakoda First Nations, including Chikani, Bearspa, and Wesley First Nation. The city of Calgary is also home to the Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3. Also, we'd like to humbly thank our program funder, IRCC, for their continued support. Without them, we would not be able to have online events such as this one. And a few quick reminders before we commence with the event. So please, please, everyone, I ask that you mute your microphones and turn off your cameras. We are all on Facebook Live right now. And I just want to remind you that we want to be courteous to everyone who is attending this event. When everyone is speaking at the same time, no one can hear themselves talk or think or hear the presenter. In addition, I want to caution you that no abusive language will be tolerated. Please do not post any personal information within the chat box. Please save all questions till the end of the workshop and type those individual questions into the chat box. An evaluation link will be provided to you at the end of the workshop. We appreciate your feedback so that we can produce better quality workshops. All right, without further ado, I'm going to just quickly uh, ask everyone to pay attention to me. Uh, we're going to just briefly talk about why we're here today. So we are going to be talking about resumes. And I know that we have an online audience who's joining us live from the Facebook. So thank you very much for joining us uh, from all over the world. And we're going to be talking about how to improve your resumes. Resumes are often a source of stress and frustration for job seekers. Uh, often people don't really know what to do with their resumes and they are confused about what they should be improving or what they should be updating. Well, today we're going to learn about how we can work on our resumes uh, from our guest speaker, Christine. Christine is an ISC coach and she's a wonderful guest speaker and she's an excellent event facilitator. So Christine, the floor is now yours. Thank you, Carlin. I will share my screen and get started here. Alrighty, thanks so much for having me today and thanks everyone for joining on Zoom and uh, via Facebook Live. It's great to be here tonight and I hope that you'll find this session useful um, if you are currently looking for work and working on a resume. So welcome to uh, Building a Better Resume. Um, as Carlin mentioned, my name is Christine McKernan and I am a coach, a career coach with Immigrant Services Calgary, and I'm excited to be here today to, to chat with you all. Um, so to get started here, I'll just give a quick overview of how we will spend our next hour. Um, we'll start by talking a little bit about what a resume is and, and why, we, why we develop them. Um, then I'll talk a little bit about three common types of resumes that you may see or you may be familiar with. Um, next, we'll talk a little bit about some do's and some don'ts of resume writing. Um, and then I'll have some tips for you on resume writing success. And we'll finish off our hour with some questions. So if you do have questions throughout the presentation, like Carlin mentioned, um, we just recommend that you maybe write those questions down. And at the end of our session, we will have lots of time for some discussion and questions um, from you all. Alrighty, so whoops, I will jump into our first slide here. So when you think about writing a resume, what comes to mind? I want you to think about your experiences with, you know, developing your resumes and tailoring them to, to different jobs you're applying for. Now, if you are comfortable and if you are on Zoom, I do encourage you right now to just jump into the chat box and use an emoji to describe your feelings towards resume writing. So if you really enjoy writing them, maybe you want to put a, a smiley face. 
but maybe if you don't enjoy them so much, if you feel like they're a little frustrating, maybe it would be a sad face, an angry face, or a bored, sleepy face. So again, if you're comfortable jumping in the chat box, just throw up an emoji there. Oh, I see already one that <laughs> is not overly pleasant. Some shocked looks. Yeah, awesome. Puzzled. Yeah, a little a little frustrated or distressed. I see one smiley face, which is great. <laughs> so someone has fun with it. Oh, we got some sunglasses. So cool. Yeah. Maybe a sad face. Okay, so lots of lots of mixed emotions. Awesome. Yeah, frowny face, sad face. Okay. Oh, crying. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Thanks everyone for sharing. Awesome. So yeah, I saw lots of kind of more sad or or disappointed or frustrated faces as opposed to a lot of happy, cheerful faces. And to be honest, that's not really a surprise. So as Carl had mentioned, um, it's really no surprise that most people kind of feel a bit of dread when writing a resume. We know that they can be very time consuming and sometimes kind of stressful. They might not always be the most fun thing to create, but they are completely necessary in order to apply for a job and land an interview. So it's kind of a necessary evil that we have to go through when we're looking for work. So thanks everyone for participating. All right, so what is a resume? A resume is a tool that we use to introduce our skills, our experience and our professional qualifications to an employer. So a resume typically includes your previous work experience your education, your skills, and some notable ac accomplishments that might be relevant to the job you're applying for. Your resume should convince a com an employer that you are qualified for the position you're applying for and encourage them to follow up with you for an interview. A resume does not need to be a full detailed overview of your experience, but rather it's a summary of some relevant experience and skills that pertain to the job you're applying for. Your resume should communicate your qualifications accurately and convincingly. So this is really your opportunity to sell yourself to a, a potential employer. A resume can also sometimes be submitted alongside a cover letter, but that's kind of up to you. And today we're really gonna focus specifically on the resume portion of your application. So there are a wide range of ways to organize your resume. But kind of the three most common types of resumes are the ones that you see on the screen. So there are chronological resumes, functional resumes, and combination resumes. So first I wanna spend a little bit of time going through what each of these are um, and learn kind of what they are and when you would wanna use each one um, over another one. So the first resume I wanna talk about is the chronological resume. So chronological resumes are the most common types of resumes. A chronological resume lists your work experience first and foremost. So you can see in the red there, your professional work experience is listed as the most important part of the resume and it's listed very first right after the summary. So when you list your employment experiences, you wanna list them then chronologically from most recent, recent to least recent. So that's why essentially it is called that chronological uh, resume. Now, when would we want to use this type of resume? Well, this type of resume is best when you have a lot of relevant work experience and you want to highlight your work experience first and foremost. So this might not be the best choice of resume if you're looking to maybe change your career path or if you're just starting a career after being in school, as potentially you might not have that relevant work experience that's relevant to the job that you're applying for. However, with that being said, and I'll come back to this at the end, um, like I mentioned, the chronological resume is the most common type of resume that we will see typically in Canada. And we do recommend this style of resume um, above the other two that I'll talk about. So typically this is what, you know, if this is something like um, what you're working on right now and, and looks very similar to what your resume looks like, then awesome, you're doing a great job. The second type of resume is a functional resume. So functional resumes focus on the skills and abilities as opposed to your employment experience. 
So you'll see on the screen your relevant skills or that green box is actually put placed before your education and other professional experience. So instead of listing your work experience first, um, the work experience is a little bit lower in the resume and we're really honing in on those relevant skills. So when you start your resume and a significant portion of the resume goes to outlining the details of your skills that are relevant to the job you're applying for. Your employment experience, like I mentioned, is secondary to your skills and often your work, um, work experience section is quite short and a lot briefer than what it is in the chronological resume. So when would we use this type of resume? Functional resumes are good if you have gaps in your work history. So for example, if you um, have moved from another country or taken some time off um, to raise kids and there's quite a, a large gap between a few different jobs, um, this might be a good resume to have so that you don't have to explain those big gaps in your resume. Um, also, if you have limited work experience or you really have the skills for a job, but maybe not the actual work experience, um, this may be the type of uh, resume format that you, you might want to go with. So the functional resume isn't as common of a resume format, so you might also though want to use caution when using this type of resume, because employers in Canada often place quite a lot of value on work paid work experience that you have. Since you're not showcasing your work experience kind of front and center, it may give the illusion that you're hiding something. So instead, again, focusing on that chronological resume and really highlighting the skills that your former employment positions um, gave you that are relevant to the job you're applying for might be a better option. And then finally, one of the third kind of common resumes that we see is the, co is the combination resume. So a combination resume is a mix of both chronological and functional resumes. So you'll see that um, the combination resume has quite a lot, a, a lot of space for both your relevant skills and your professional work experience. So it's an equal mix of both of those things, employment experience and skills, um, and you use both of those sections to demonstrate your qualification. This type of resume is ideal if you have relevant skills and work experience that you want to highlight. So again, when would we use one of these? Uh, combination resumes are ideal when you have, like I said, both relevant work experience and unique skills to highlight. And they can also be quite handy if you've recently finished school or training and you wanna highlight your learnings and skills from your education. Again, just a word of caution, um, combination resumes can become quite lengthy because we have a big section for your skills and then another big section for your employment history. So, like functional resumes, they also stray from kind of that traditional st chronological style that most employers prefer. So again, just be aware that um, if you do put a lot of stress on the skills on your resume, um, that sometimes is something that an employer might be a little bit weary of. So again, um, just something to be aware of. So once again, I just wanted to put out, these are the three types of resumes that I just talked about. Um, all are slightly different in terms of just how you organize and order your employment history and skills. But um, as I mentioned, if we could pick one of the three, I would definitely say the chronological resume is the most commonly used in Canada, as well as maybe the most appropriate style when developing your resume. If you have questions about your resume style, or if you feel like, you know, I think the functional resume really um, would work well with my situation, that's definitely something you can explore and you can always reach out to Immigrant Services Calgary for some of that one on one support to see which type of resume works best for you. Alrighty, moving on now to our do's and don'ts of resume writing. So here I've compiled some kind of key strategies to make your resumes good, but also some key strategies to avoid to make sure that we're building a successful resume. So I'm going to go through, I think, five different do's and don'ts for us to jot down and remember when we're creating our resumes. And the first one is a do. So this is something that we definitely want to do. So on our resume, we want to give specific quantifiable examples of what we've done. So we know that you have lots of skills, but it's very important to be specific about the impact you've made in your previous experience. So for example, in a previous job. 
So think about something like um, if you want to talk on your resume about the strong communication skills you have. Now, it's one thing that we could put down in our skills that we have strong communication skills and and that's great. But think about how we could quantify that, how we could provide a number to that and really give an example of how uh, how we've demonstrated strong communication skills. So in this case, I could say instead of putting strong communication skills in my resume under my job experience um, for a role that I've been in, I could say that, you know, I've chaired and built consensus with a committee that I've led with over 20 diverse stakeholders in order to develop a work plan and, and a terms of reference. So in this example, I'm giving a really specific number of how many people in this committee that I worked with and I led, and then some of those key deliverables around developing a work plan and a terms of reference. So in an example like this, not only am I showcasing how I, how I communicate effectively through leading and chairing a, a working group or a committee, but I also am giving a clear example of some of those outputs and how I have both strong verbal and written communication skills. So really wanting to be specific and again, quantify um, um, the work that you've done in your resume so that your employer, the employer really knows um, the extent of which those skills are able to be applied. On the flip side, something that we do not wanna do is we don't wanna include false statements. So really being careful to make sure that we're representing our work experience effectively and appropriately on our resume. So just being careful not to misrepresent our experiences and skills. I like this little picture where, you know, maybe the dog is pretending to be a lion, but when he shows up, it's pretty clear he's not actually a lion. So um, again, just going back to the last example, um, we said, you know, I, I've chaired and I've built consensus with that committee of 20 diverse stakeholders in order to develop a terms of reference and a work plan. Well, maybe some of that's true. Maybe I have, you know, chaired, chaired a committee of 20 people, but I didn't actually develop a terms of reference. It was maybe just more of a guidance document. So in that case, I would just want to be very careful with the language and the words I've used because I don't want to show up to the job and on my first day, I get asked to create a terms of reference or a work plan and I don't even know where to start. So again, just being really particular about, um, about you know, selling yourself, but being honest about where your skills are and where your experiences are. The next do is to paint a picture of who you are. So your resume should give your employer an idea of who you are and what value you can bring to the company. So this is especially important if you're applying for a job that maybe you don't have direct experience in. So if you're listing your work experience and it's a bit of a stretch to, um, to the job that you're applying for, it's really important to paint a picture for that employer so that they know that you have transferable skills and that you're ready to learn, you're up for the challenge and that you can and you have in the past succeeded with maybe just a bit of direction and training. So you don't necessarily always have to have the perfect job experience, but if you can really paint a picture as someone who's willing to learn and has some of those transferable skills, um, I think you, you can still be successful at landing that interview and, and kind of hooking in that employer to, to want to learn more about you. Again, on the flip side here, something that we don't want to do so we want to paint a picture metaphorically. We want to show an employer who we are as a person. But something that we don't want to do on a resume is include a real picture of ourselves. So photos really are not necessary on a resume. And this is something that you can easily remove if you have on your resume right now. Um, I know when I look on Google for examples of templates or examples of resumes online, I often see resumes that have this photo or an opportunity to put a headshot or a photo of yourself on it. But in Canada, that's typically not necessary. So I would say leave the photo out and remember that, you know, our resume is, we don't have a lot of space to, to sell ourselves and, and share our skills. So use that space that a photo would be in to uh, talk more about your skills and experience. So again, a really quick and easy one, if you have that photo on your resume, not necessary, just remove it. Alrighty, next, another do on your resume, of course, is to include your educational experience. So even if high school is the highest form of ed education you've reached, be sure to include that as an employer does wanna know that you finished um, uh, your high school education. 
Um, and if, it, if you're someone who's just recently graduated school or recently finished up some training, um, and maybe you've been focusing on your education over the past few years, as opposed to formal work experience, um, you do have an opportunity to highlight some extracurricular activities you've been involved with. Maybe you were involved in some research opportunities, or maybe you were doing a master's degree where you were conducting research. Um, or you were involved potentially in a capping project or something else that was really significant in your education that might be relevant to your the, the job you're applying for. And if that's the case, definitely spend a little space and a little bit of time in your resume providing some context for that for the employer. So employment experience is so important, but that educational experience is also really vital um, on your resume so that the employer knows what formal education and training you have. One other thing with the educational experience, um, in that this section, it doesn't just always have to be a university or college level education that you include. Um, if you have really significant trainings, or like I said, if you've been spending quite some time um, doing specific trainings or certifications, you can also include that in your under your educational experience as well. Okay, so we have a do, now we're gonna go to a don't. Something that we don't need to include in the education section is you do not need to include your grade point average or your GPA or the specific grades that you got in courses in your you know, college or university or training. So again, this is something I see sometimes when I look at um, examples of resumes on, on Google or online, um, but typically in Canada and in Alberta, we don't, employers are not looking for your specific grades. It's really enough to say that you've completed a course, you've completed that designation, um, and the, the, the grades that you got in each of those courses or overall really aren't that important. Of course, if you feel very proud of that GPA that you got and you wanna include it, you know, you can, it's not necessarily terrible to include, but I would say, you know, leave it out. And in my personal experience, I've never included my GPA or my grades on a resume. Okay. Next, um, maybe pretty straightforward, but just a good one to remember is that of course, we always wanna include our contact information. So we're send, spending all this time putting our resume together. We, of course, want to make sure that we provide our contact information so that an employer can contact you to follow up about an interview. So on your resume, you would definitely want to have your name, your phone number, and your email address. But other information you can include is potentially a mailing address or your home address, um, a LinkedIn profile or other, other links to any um, sites or, or social media that you have, but those are very optional. Um, you definitely just want to include the phone number, the email address, and the name so that the employer can contact you. Um, and just a reminder as well, I know a lot of the times when we apply for jobs, um, we're filling out an online application form and then attaching a resume to that online application. Um, oftentimes on that online application, you're being asked to include, you know, your name, phone number, and email address already. But even if you're including that in the online application, you also want to make sure that that is, that, that that information lives on your resume. So think about an employer, you know, if they print out your resume or are looking at that resume as a document separate to your online application, the employer really wants to, or you want to make sure the employer has your contact information easily accessible so they can follow up with you if needed. So we're going to include our contact information, but we do not want to include a date of birth or your age. So just as a reminder here, similar to the headshot or a photo of yourself, you do not need to include your date of birth or age. And this information is just a bit unnecessary to include. Um, it also could negatively affect your chances of an interview potentially, and you would just never want to put yourself in a situation where you risk an interview, um, risk not getting an interview because of information that you really don't need to include. Um, just also a reminder that candidates um, are protected, uh, candidates for employment are protected from having um, to disclose their age on an application form or in an interview process. The Alberta Human Rights Acts make it illegal to discriminate against people and treat them unfairly because of their age. So again, this is from a legal requirement and uh, not a requirement. So again, something that we can easily leave off and focus more on those skills and employment experiences on the resume. 
Alrighty. So next one is um, to be detailed, but be concise. So I like this, this comic here where Bob here has created a resume and really just included, my name is Bob and I need a job. So Bob is nice and concise, as we see. Um, the employer says, yeah, I must say, Bob, your resume is concise, nice and concise, but Bob really isn't selling himself at all. He isn't telling the employer why he would be the best candidate for the job. So you want to give enough information to showcase your skills, but also you don't want to go into too, too much detail. So there is kind of a sweet spot in terms of length for your resume. Um, you want to give enough information that you provide context around your, your job experience, why you'd be kind of the best candidate in, in your job or your summary, um, and then outlining all of those other things like your education and skills as well. But again, uh, we don't want to be too, too detailed and make the resume too long because that will bring me to my next don't, which is we don't want to go over two pages for a resume. So general rule of thumb is that your resume should be maximum two pages. Again, we see this comic um, before we start the interview. I know you'll want to read my, the rest of my resume. You know, employers are busy. Managers are busy. So they often don't have time to read through a huge novel worth of a resume or a huge stack of papers. So again, resumes should be concise and a maximum of two pages. Um, employers often receive a lot of applicants for jobs, depending on what you're applying for. So they could have hundreds of applicants that are applying for a specific position. And we wanna make sure that we're not you know, wasting the employer's time and we're not um, scaring them away from reading your resume if it's too long. So it's really important to be concise. And one other thing with that is that I do think concise resumes can really be a, a sign of strong writing and communication skills. So oftentimes, uh, you know, jobs would like you to have strong communication skills. And one way to showcase your ability to communicate effectively and concisely is through a two page resume where you can really be concise about summarizing your skills and experience. Alrighty, so we've made it through our do's and don'ts of resume writing. And now I wanna jump into a few tips for success. So how can we be successful in our resume writing beyond just those do's and don'ts? So my first tip is to tailor your resume to the job that you're applying for. So I put a little diagram here because I know I think maybe some of you are cringing a little bit after I say, you know, tailor your resume. That means every time you apply for a job, you need to do some work to your resume. And I know that that can be a very long and, and sometimes boring process. So here is my suggestion for you. First and foremost, you want to develop a master resume. And probably a lot of you already have this. So it's following that template with your educational experience, your recent job experience, those skills, volunteer experience, uh, contact information, all of those things. So things that are pretty consistent throughout. Then when you're looking for a job and you see a job that you would want to apply for, you want to study that job description and see what specific skills are important in order to uh, uh, get that job or get that interview. Then you want to go back to your master resume and edit, edit and update the resume accordingly. So this doesn't mean that you need to, to develop a brand new resume with every job that you apply for. It's just that you wanna spend some time editing and kind of tweaking your resume to really reflect the job that you're applying for. So if we think about something like your educational experience, typically, you know, that's, that's not gonna to change too much. So that section, you probably won't have to edit too much. Obviously your contact information, you, won't, you will not have to edit too much. But probably your skills section, you'll want to tailor it a little bit to what the job is looking for and really um, emphasize the skills that are specific to the job you're applying for. And then also in your employment experience, there are probably a lot of examples from previous work that you could draw off of or draw from. Um, so this is a really nice time to think about the job description and the job you're applying for and then pull specific examples from previous work experience that would be really relevant to the job you're applying for. 
So hopefully once you have that master resume, it should only take maybe an hour or so to tailor your resume to the job you're applying for. So not a ton of time, not hours and hours, not a full day, um, but it really does help when you're applying for your for a job to tailor the resume somewhat to the position you're applying for. Now, my next tip actually kind of builds off of this one. So in order to tailor your resume, you're going to want to use maybe some key terms from the job posting. So I, like I mentioned, sometimes jobs have, you know, can have hundreds of applicants apply for them and they can be very competitive. And in that case, there are circumstances where an employer just does not have the time to review every single resume independently and on their own. So oftentimes um, employers and businesses will use electronic systems to um, review resumes and then basically select the ones that have the right terminology or the right words used to um, kind of scale that down and determine who may get an interview. So in this case, it's really important to use the correct language, the correct words, the correct terminology to make sure that, um, that, that the employer you know, flags your interview or flags your resume um, outside of everyone else's. So I wanna give an example here. Um, on the screen, I pulled up an example of a job posting that actually is currently listed on Indeed for a customer service representative at a local bank. So I just wanted you to spend just a quick minute here. Um, you don't need to read it in full detail, but take a moment and just reflect on this application and flag maybe one or two words that might be key terms that you could use in your resume. So I'll give you a moment and then I'll, I'll, I'll flag which ones I thought were, were good words. So we have a bit of, a bit of context around the opportunity at the, at the um, beginning of the job posting. And then under the section, what do you need to succeed? There's some bullet points of, again, maybe some potential skills that we could use in, in showcasing in our resume. Okay, so I'm gonna show you now kind of some of the ones that I flagged. Hopefully everyone was able to pick one or two out of, of some of those key terms that we could use in a resume. So this is, an, is not an exhaustive list. If you picked some other words, that's totally okay. But I thought um, some of the words that were really standing out to me were things like proven time management, organizational and problem solving skills, exceptional client service, um, building rapport and maintaining client relationships, passionate and curious, and then digital literacy. So again, there are probably a few more terms in there that would be maybe um, useful to include, but I think if I scanned this job posting, those, were, those are some terms that I think maybe I wanna make sure I'm using some of those words in my resume, or I'm giving really clear examples or synonyms of those words in my resume so that I can show how I am able to display the skills um, and qualifications that the posting is asking for. Okay, our next, my next tip is again, maybe straightforward, but it cannot be undermined here. Spell check and proofread your resume. So this is so important. Um, and again, I know sometimes it can be time consuming to read your resume over and over again, but you just think how much a shame it would be to not get an interview because of a spelling error or a grammar area error that was easily overlooked. So when I think about how I edit my resume in order to make sure there's no grammar area eras, errors, um, I think about it in, in this pyramid model. So first and foremost, at the bottom, I want to use spell check. Spell check is super easy to use. It's already in Microsoft Word. All I've got to do is click and it shows me where I've made some silly grammar or sorry, spelling, silly spelling mistakes in my resume. So quick and easy to use. There's really no excuse not to use spell check after you've written your resume. The next step up from there is to proofread. So I recommend you read your resume out loud so that you can really make sure that you don't have any little grammar errors, accidentally misspelled one word for another, um, and you'll, you'll be able to catch any of those mistakes that maybe spell check missed. So reading that aloud is really important. I also think sometimes, you know, if you're working on your resume for quite some time, maybe it's late at night and your brain's getting a little bit fuzzy, 
um, it's kind of nice sometimes to take a break. So either, you know, go to bed for the night or walk away from your computer for a little bit, take a brain break, and then come back and proofread your resume one last time after you feel a little bit more refreshed and you have a fresh set of eyes to look at your, um, your resume. So once I've spell checked, then I've proofread. The last option that I have, and, and you don't have to use a program like this, but there are programs like Grammarly or editing programs that you can download onto your computer and onto Microsoft Word to detect errors in grammar or to suggest a different way of phrasing some words that you um, have in your resume. So again, these programs are not, it's not mandatory that you do them. I think if you use spell check and you proofread, then um, you're already, you know, should be doing really well. But if you want to take that extra step of moving that resume from good to great and get some suggestions on how to maybe um, word some things a little differently or improve the style of your writing, um, these programs are really nice to look into. So I would recommend them if you have the time um, to, to download them and, and take a look. And then in addition to that, one other, one other tip I have just in terms of making sure we don't miss any of those silly mistakes is to have a friend review your resume. So, you know, you may know someone right now who's also applying for jobs or is also looking for um, new work and updating their resume. So that's a great person that you can, can buddy up with and share your resume with. Um, I think it's probably quite useful to see another person's resume as well and see how they you know, format their information or what skills they highlight. But more so than that, it's really just nice to have a fresh set of eyes on your resume to catch those little mistakes that maybe you didn't even realize you were making. So, you know, your friend might be, um, might have completely different work experience from you. They might be looking for a completely different type of job than you, and that's okay. I think the purpose of doing a peer review or having a friend review your resume isn't necessarily to have them look at your skills or your job qualifications and make changes to that. It really is just to make sure that you're not missing any mistakes in terms of spelling, grammar, and that type of thing. And they really do provide a bit of a fresh outlook on, on the resume that you've, um, you've developed. Alrighty, and last but not least, if all else fails, or if you're really just starting from scratch and not really sure where to start, of course, do not be afraid to use a resume template. So like I've mentioned throughout this presentation, there are tons of resume templates online on Google, um, but I will warn you that not all resume templates are the same. And like I've mentioned in this presentation today, there are certain things on a resume that you want to include and some things that you really don't need to. So remember that, that headshot or the photo, um, your date of birth and your age, we don't need to include that on a resume, but sometimes templates will ask you to include that. So using a, um, an effective template can be really helpful to help you guide the development of that master resume. Um, the example that I have on the screen here is one that is available through Immigrant Services Calgary. So some of you may see this and it may be familiar, which is great. Um, if you have never seen this template before, um, this is something that is free for you to tap into. So we can connect you with these resources after our session today. But again, this really is a great way to lay out everything that you need for your resume. And all you've got to do is just you know, cop, or remove the, the generic messaging and really tailor this to all of your experience, all of your information, all of your skills. So it really helps, especially if you are starting out the job hunt right now, or if you are looking to, to really revamp your resume from start to finish, may as well use a template that you know is, um, is backed by Immigrant Services Calgary, and you know that will be um, successful for the context of jobs in Alberta and jobs in Canada. So yeah, we will, we can share that out with you if you haven't seen that before. And with that, that is, those are all my suggestions. So I hope you are able to get some good suggestions today for your resumes. I hope that um, you, you learn some new tidbits around how to write a successful resume, um, things to include in a resume and things maybe to leave out. Um, I know we talked a little bit about the different types of resumes today, so we're happy to chat more about, um, about those if you have questions. 
And I wanted to leave quite a bit of time for a discussion today. So I know that I haven't been opening the chat, but I see there's quite a few messages in the chat. So we have the rest of the time just to answer questions from you about um, your resumes and anything we talked about in the session today. So thanks very much. Thank you so much, Christine. That was a wonderful presentation. I found myself taking a few notes. Okay, uh, just quickly, we're going to thank the Facebook audience for joining us and bid them goodbye. So we will turn off Facebook Live.